Imagine that. To come and speak to you, my shoelaces stuck together and I couldn't walk. Thank you for untangling me. <laughs> my sisters and my brothers, good night. Good night to my colleagues on the head table, the Honorable Unesile, the Honorable Sean Edwards, and a special good night to the endorsed candidate for Anthony Recanaries, Comrade Wayne Girard. And tonight, you heard what Wayne Girard is all about. Here's a young man, a very t a tall young man, who is presenting himself to you, the people of Ansari Canaries. He could have done many things. He could have stayed where he was and lived his life with his family. He could have done many things, but he's decided that he would make himself available to work with you to improve the quality of life of the people of Ansari Canaries. And Wayne shares the same ethos that the Labour Party shares. A belief in the people of St. Lucia. A belief in you, the people of St. Lucia. A belief that you come first before anything else. And the policies of this government and the policies that Wayne Girard has subscribed to will put you, you, the people of St. Lucia, first and foremost in the development of the country. So this journey is exciting. It's an exciting journey going forward. You know the state of the country. You know how this government does not care. You know this government has for four years fought from crisis to crisis, corruption to corruption. I heard the prime minister speak about why he fired, why the fellow from Denry North left, and one mix-up story. All what the prime minister says is mix up. You cannot decide what is true and what is not true. But we have to move on from that. We have to leave that. Every day is a scandal. The latest scandal is the condo scandal, the condo commerce. Every day is a scandal. We have to leave that and we have to go forward. We have to look at the future of St. Lucia and the future for the people of St. Lucia. We are in dangerous times. We are in COVID times. And the government of St. Lucia was given money at a zero interest rate to change the lives of the people of St. Lucia. The government of St. Lucia was given money for education. School is opening or some schools open. Some schools open. In my constituency, they are only now repairing the roof. Six months. Six months. The government is only now repairing the roof and doing some repairs in the schools. But the children that have to go to school, how are they going to school? The government in giving support gave each of the parliamentarians $175,000 for school supplies. You know how much they gave the opposition? $10,000. $175,000 to the government. The Prime Minister himself, he had about $300,000 for school supplies. And you know what the opposition, six of us got? $10,000 each. That is what is happening in this country. $10,000 for the opposition parliamentarians. But it doesn't matter. The time will come when the people of St. Lucia will put a stop to that nonsense and elect the St. Lucia Labour Party. But what would we have done if we were in government in this COVID crisis? What would we have done with the IMF funds for education? Here's what we would have done. We would have, we would have ensured that you would have to pay no facility fees for your children to go to school. We would have ensured that at least for this time, at least this time during the crisis, you will get all the basic school books free of charge for this time. We would have ensured that we would have given you 
each of you at least two sets of school uniforms for your children to go to school now. And most of all, most importantly, we would have made it a priority for each child going to school in Ansari to have a laptop for the education. That is what a Labour Party would have done for you in these COVID times. We would have ensured that every teacher has the requirements so that she can teach properly in the school. We would have, we would have ensured that every school, because now, because of the situation, school, going to school may be different. But we would have ensured that there was internet access to every home in Ansari so that the children could go online and get their education. That's what we would have done for you. And the money was available for that. The money, they gave them money for that. There was money for that. The IMF gave them money at 0% to be paid over 40 years. 0% at 40 year, for 40 years is the first time in the history of the IMF that they've decided to give money at 0% for income support to help people. Here's what the Labour Party would have done. The fishermen in Ansari, who right now, as my friend Sean says, have to go and be all over the place, pump, 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 selling fish. We would have given them what is called, we would have subsidized their income. We would have given them income support. The fishermen would have got income support with the IMF funds. So every fisherman in Ansari would get some money every month until things get back to normal with the IMF funds given to them by the government. We would have, we would have, we would have ensured that, that the agriculture, that the farmers that they talk about, my sisters and my brothers, has the government told you the state of the banana industry? They said to you, plant bananas. We'll send bananas to Matnik. The Prime Minister said he'd signed a contract for bananas to Matnik and France. When, <laughs> when they say they send bananas to France, the minister say the, the fingers were too long, it couldn't go in the box. <laughs> he said, one day he said long, and next time he said he's short. So they say the box too big because the finger's short. And next time the finger's long and the box short. <laughs> Up to today, they cannot send one banana to Matnik. But they still come and tell you, yes, we'll send bananas to Matnik. You know what? You call that an illusion. It's an old tactic. It's an old Cambridge analytical tactic to tell you what you want to hear and give you a false hope that will never happen. So the farmers now, while they are suffering, while they have the bananas on the trees, while they have planted bananas, while they have put their heart and soul into banana cultivation, they cannot sell bananas because this government has bluffed them, this government has fooled them, and this government has put them in that state. And Winfresh, Winfresh that they refuse to tell you about. They refuse to tell you what is the state of Winfresh. You must ask them these questions. What is the state of Winfresh? Winfresh, where the minister was a director on the board, Winfresh is in a state that no one can tell you. But what they do? They believe that they can fool you. So they'll come around, and they'll come around short as ever, trying to fool you. What do you want? What can I give you? $500. I'll fix your roof for you. Just because they want to fool you. But this Labour Party is different. This Labour Party is about solving your problems. There are problems and there are issues in Ansari. There are problems of sanitation. There are problems of drainage. And I tell you, for the first time in the history of Ansari, we will try to solve these problems in many different ways. And if the time comes for us to have to relocate and have a new housing scheme for Ansari countries, Ansari, the Labour Party will ensure that happens. Because we have to stop that, these problems in the country. So we're going to be looking at how in doing something, doing some level of investigation
to improve the housing situation by making lands available for you so we can take you out of this perpetual problem anytime it rainfalls. But in the meantime, we'll ensure that the drains are kept clean, that the place is kept clean, whilst we look to have a permanent solution by improving the housing for you in Ansari Canaries. And the health center. And now they're rushing for the health center. This health center should have been finished a long time ago. This health center should have been finished a long time ago. You know why it wasn't finishing? Because they were, they were mama guy if tender to give who which contract, to give who to buy who, to give who to buy what, which contractor will do it, which friend of theirs will supply the material, how they'll organize it. So they were juggling, waiting. But I always told them that 44 years is not 40 years. And right now, the four years is over. So you're full fall. They're all over the place. So they rush in the health center because from the beginning, if they had done what the Labour Party had left, this health center would have been completed for the people of Ansari. This health center would have been completed. <laughs> my sisters and, and my brothers, we have issues. We have issues in Ansari. We have serious issues in Ansari. We have issues of transportation. Whilst we seek to bring the jobs to you, we are going to ensure that we work with the Minibus Association to solve the problems of transportation that you have in these areas. There are serious problems of transportation. After a certain time, you can't get a bus to come to your part, to your part of, of answering Jack Mel or these areas because the buses are not running. We, when we get into power, we will work with the minibus association, work with the bus drivers to improve the transport situation in Ansari. So at least, while we get ready to bring the jobs to you, you will be able to get to work in castries or grossly wherever work is possible. So we are going to help solve the transportation. We are going to solve the transportation problems in this country. My sisters and my brothers, in Ansari, we know the issues of unemployment. Many of you, you want a job. Many of you need a job. Many of you want to work, but the jobs are not available. When we came in, in during the last period of government, when things were rough, when we had no IMF money, when we didn't have no CIP money, this government has CIP money, and that's the first government that has CIP money to spend. And I'll tell you, we will use that CIP money on the people. We will use that CIP money on you. We will use that CIP money to improve your housing. We will, that's what we'll do if you're your CIP money. Because we never had any CIP money to spend. They have CIP money to spend. And they're not telling you how much CIP money they have and how they are spending it. But I can assure you, the same way in Dominica, the CIP money is used for people. And you can see for yourself, when the Labour Party and I made the pledge that we would have one university or one trained graduate per household, what they said, they said, where are you getting the money from? Where are you getting the money from? Anytime it is to do things for the people of the country, where are you getting the money from? But Dominica has, really, has a, nearly reached that state. Dominica's taking their CIP money to build health centers, to build houses, to build a new hospital. We have two hospitals here. This government spent four years and refused to complete St. Jude. They damaged, they broke up, they mashed up two buildings at St. Jude. They refused, and now election is coming. They have taken another 60 million dollars to say they complete in St. Jude because they believe they can fool you when they, if they open St. Jude before the election. But I'll tell you something. As I've said before, I'm not a man of threats. I don't make threats. I'm not a man of big noise and gle gle. I'm not that scary. I cannot, that's not me. I'm a man of measured words. But I'll tell you something. When we get into government, we are going to ensure that 
every cent of taxpayers' money that was spent is accounted for. <clears throat> it is accounted for. Because you can't tell me. You mash up two buildings at St. Jude. You destroy them, put a tractor in them. Up to this day, you haven't said what was wrong with these two buildings. And you've taken another $60 million to say you're building a new hospital and you intend to fool people because you believe by doing that, you will, you will get the votes. That must stop, my brothers and my sisters. So, very quickly, on unemployment. When we were in government, we had an all-year step for the people of Ansari. But we have decided that in the short run, that must happen. But in the medium and longer run, we, have more, we want more sustainable jobs for the people of Ansari countries. We want more sustainable jobs. And these jobs are going to be aimed at improving the quality of life of the people of Ansari. And foremost in our priorities would be the young people of Ansari countries and the environs. And that is why this Labour Party, we have put together a novel policy never before in the history of St. Lucia. And they don't understand it, so they criticize it. A youth economy for the young people of St. Lucia. <clears throat> and the reason why they criticize it, because they don't understand it. They don't understand it. And you know why they don't understand it? Because they cannot believe that a government can have the foresight to put young people at the forefront of the economic development of the country. The youth economy, my sisters and my brothers, will ensure that young people turn their hobbies into entrepreneurship and their skills into business. Young people who have the talent, young people who want to go in, in subjects like agriculture, the government will ensure that we give them the necessary finance, the necessary skills, so they can have the new type of agriculture that they want to enter. They want to go into agriculture using greenhouses. They want to go into agro-industries. They want to convert raw materials into juices. They want to make mango juice. They want to make guava juice. They want to make passion fruit juice. They want to make an industry out of that. And that is what young people say to us. Young people say to us, they want to go into computer skills. They want to be able to go into animation. They want to go into entertainment. They want to make the creative industries work for them. That is what the youth economy is all about. Young people tell us that, that groups like the dance troupe in, in Answer and the dance troupe in, in Canaries, I call them, I think it's Twisted, that's the name. They say they want to expand. They say they want uniforms. They say they want trading facilities. The Labour Party government, that is what our youth economy is about. Our youth economy is about creating singing heroes. And you had one, you had a mighty, a champion of Calypso in Ansari. The youth economy is about taking his skills and marketing it, selling his skills. It's about letting him go, exposing him to the global world so he can make money for himself and he can make money for St. Lucia. It has happened before. Look, look at the, the, the artists that come out of Jamaica. Look at that. Look at what Jamaica has done with their music because the government had the vision to invest in a serious way in that industry. And the youth economy will invest in a serious way in the, in the music industry so that we can expand it, we can sell it, we can market it, and we can bring St. Lucia to the next level. The youth economy is about ensuring that the skills of our sports people, the sports people, the footballers, the cricketers, the people with the, the, the athletes, it's about nurturing them. It's about making facilities available to them so they can sell. They can look at today, St. Lucia Zooks on the Darren Sami did so well at the CPI. The youth economy is about creating these kind of heroes, these kind of sportsmen. That's what the youth economy is about. It's about having a section of the budget 
And when the Minister of Finance will have his first budget, he will announce how much money will go directly into the youth economy. And if they like it, they have to put it in the pipe and... So my sisters and my brothers, we are offering you a different government. We are offering you a different covenant. We are offering a government where we will respect institutions. This government does not respect anybody. They abuse the privilege in the House of Parliament. They abuse the National Trust. Once you're against the government, they abuse you. They victimize you. They go after you personally. They use the offices of the Prime Minister to do whatever they want to do because they don't respect institutions. They have no respect for you, the people. They believe they can fool you. An election is coming. They're all over the place. They're all over the place. Walking here, walking there. All kind of nonsense. All kind of false promises. But this Labour Party is deeper than that. This Labour Party is about speaking to you about your future. This Labour Party is about doing tangible things for young people. And we've done it before. We've taken care of the young people before in this country. We've improved the education system. But now we have to go into an education revolution. We have to take it to the other level. And that is why, that is why we ensured that we started the One Laptop Project. And what I heard they're going to do, they're going to do e-books. An e-book is not a laptop. And there's also a lot of story in this e-book business that will come later. An e-book is, is not a laptop. But that is for another show. All that to fool you. All that to bluff you. No respect for you. No respect for your intelligence. No respect for you. Because right now, they believe. They believe that Ansari and Aswin said. They believe that people in Ansari, people in Marsha, they're poor and they can fool them. That's what they believe. But the people in Ansari have the same aspirations like anybody else in the world. And the people of Ansari, with good leadership, will aspire to the greatest heights. And this Labour Party government and Wayne Girard in the parliament will work with you to achieve that goal. And as I leave, I want to tell the young people of St. Lucia and the people of Ansari, taking pictures with you is not the, the only solution. That's not the only solution. We need to work with you to develop you. And I'll give you an example. Sean made a point of $30 million going to what they call sporting infrastructure. And they gave a foreigner $10 million of consultancy fees when there are people like Crafton who can do, who can prepare playing surfaces anywhere in the world. But they had to look for a foreigner. And what did that $30,000 do? I understand it created artificial turf. Where people are saying that this artificial turf is not good for your health. But no, mama guy, mama guy, mama guy. What this Labour Party would have done would have ensured that every plain facility in this country would have had proper changing rooms, would have a liquor pavilion, would have had proper, a proper surface to play. But most importantly, anybody who has reached a stage where they represent St. Lucia, the Labour Party would, would have ensured that they get all the equipment, all the help, all the support, all the training that they need to represent St. Lucia. That is, what, that is what we would have done with that $30 million. So we're different. We're not like them. We can't be like them. And in the coming few months, there's going to be a lot of tactics. Voter suppression. Vote buying. Voter suppression means that they'll target you, the young people. I see young people in this audience tonight. They'll target you with what is called voter suppression. Trying to influence you not to vote. They'll tell you all kinds of things. They'll tell you all politicians are the same. This and that. Targeting you, the young people, for you not to vote. All kinds of tactics. I saw an ad in Jamaica where they said, a young fella saying, don't vote. 
Cam don't campaign, open a business. Don't campaign, open a business. So all kind of these things. You will see all kind of programs. All kind of programs. Right now, the government has blurred the distinction between government information and party political propaganda. The distinction, there's no more distinction between it. Government information has turned into party propaganda. So all over the station, there are paid operatives pushing an agenda that is not a country agenda, but, but is a party political agenda using taxpayers' money to do it. You're right. We need our money back. So it will come. Voter suppression will start. All these programs to confuse you. And the second thing that you'll get is the buying of votes. And the buying of votes has started because very soon a few selected persons will be offered building materials, will be offered concrete blocks, will be offered tiles, will be offered ready mix. Very soon, look out for it. That is the prelude. That's the prelude. That is where they are going to be coming from. So I want you to be on guard. I want you to think how they spent that IMF money. I want to tell you that, that the small businesses in Ansari that cannot survive because of COVID, the government of their party would have used that money to subsidize the sales of these small businesses. We'd have used that money to help the farmers. We'd use that money to help the fishers. We'd have that money, we'd use that money to help the parents to send their children to school. That is how we would have used that money if you were in government. So we are different. We urge you to see that we are different, to feel that we are different, to make you understand that we put you first. All our policies are to put you, the people of St. Lucia first. So we are different. I want to tell you, think carefully. Do not let the short-term mama guy, the bluff that you'll hear now, confuse you. Think about the future of yourself and the future of your children and the future of your country. Look at what they've done us. Look at how they've treated us. Look at the names they've called us, medicants, backing dogs, listening, not, not listening to us because our talk is, uh, is road, road, roadside talk, jackasses, all these things. My sisters and my brothers, remember these things. And when the time comes, use your vote wisely. Support Wayne Girard for answering countries and support the St. Lucia Labour Party. I thank you.